Good Monday afternoon to you. I'm Kevin Holmes. Thanks for joining us on air and online. After years of questions and delays, today the double murder trial of Kyler Use began in Cass County. We saw Use in the courtroom with his defense team. The infamous case linked to murders of Kara Kapetsky and Jessica Runyon's nearly a decade apart. And today we heard opening arguments of those cases. My colleague Caitlin Canute is joining us now live from Cass County. Caitlin, good afternoon to you. You've been there all day for day one of this trial, so walk us through the takeaway from today. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us here. Yeah, so we actually got things started a little bit late today, and that's partly due to the fact that they brought in these jurors from several hours away in the St. Louis region because they needed to find a jury pool that hadn't been exposed to this case that's been going on for years and has been uh, has received quite a bit of media attention. Uh, one thing that was really interesting today, Kevin, it's the first time that we've seen Kyler used outside of the orange uh, jailware that, that he's been in the last few times we've seen him in court. Instead, today he was dressed very professionally. He had a dark charcoal, su charcoal suit. Uh, suit and tie. His hair was neatly combed. Honestly, he looked like he could be a court intern, with the exception of that neck tattoo that was kind of popping up above his collar, something that uh, the state actually touched upon and said had relevance to this case. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but he didn't look at the jurors. He didn't look at the family members. He did communicate with his attorneys at his table and appeared to be taking notes. Uh, meanwhile, the families were there. And let's not forget that these are two families who didn't know each other previously, but are now linked by this double tragedy. And so Jessica Runyon's mom was sitting next to Karkapetsky's mom and stepdad at different times. They were patting each other on the shoulder, kind of nodding at one another. Um, obviously, it has to be a very difficult day today as they face the man who was accused of killing their two daughters. Um, in terms of the opening statements that we heard, and again, that's all they got to in court today, really there were no surprises. The state's argument was very short and sweet, and basically they were saying this man was connected to these two young women and basically painted him as someone who was jealous and went into a fit of rage. Uh, the defense, meanwhile, started poking holes in some of these alleged confessions, uh, mentioning that he had an alibi and suggesting that there was no way he could have done what he's accused of doing. Take a listen. When Cara tried to end her relationship with Eust due to his abuse, you said, if I can't have her, no one can. There is literally no time during the day when he could have committed this crime. So the defense started talking about some missing phone records, some things that we've actually heard and we've talked about on air that were in some of their motions to dismiss uh, originally. Um, and so they're trying to set the stage. And the defense really talked much longer than the state. Um, at the end of the day, the judge said, we're going to call it here. We're going to start tomorrow morning at 830. Um, he did tell the jurors this was pretty interesting, both before and after in his jury instructions, telling them to make sure, keep in mind, they're sequestered for the duration of this trial, not to talk about the case, not to post about the case, not to talk to one another about the case. They're really trying to keep them isolated as much as possible. But we should start hearing witness testimony tomorrow morning again at 8.30. Kevin? All right, Caitlin, thank you so much. Tomorrow, no doubt, will be a busy, busy day. Our coverage of this case is extensive, as Caitlin mentioned. To see more on KSHB.com on our special page, it's designated to the trial. There you can see our special, the background of this year's long investigation, and our special podcast recapping the trial.